song and so good morning to you Diana and uh, it's good to know that the music and of course the video is doing very well but it's interesting that we're playing this song especially at this point where the year is ending and of course you'd expect that prophecies will be flying about here and there um, I mean there have been concerns about whether these prophecies are really genuine or not looking at some of them that have been prophesied of course this year that did not exactly come to pass we're told that the Lord reveals to redeem but again there's also that question about whether all these men who prophesy are really men of God true men of God or are just doing this to also make themselves popular so the Ghana police service issued a directive two days ago cautioning men of God to be circumspect about these prophecies that they will be putting out because uh, they said that well if you're going to cause fear and panic we're going to take you to court and if you cannot prove it then it's going to be a problem and a few men of God have responded to this directive by the Ghana police service in fact um, a number of them are saying that well you have to withdraw this directive because uh, that means going against the church and the word of God and you couldn't care the wrath of God let me just read a few things from you know some men of God most Reverend Dr. Kwabna Buafu, who is the presiding bishop for the Methodist Church of Ghana, granted an interview, and he said that the ethics of the profession must be allowed to be at play here. Like a doctor, you can't just come out announcing that a patient is going to die. This will stir up unnecessary fear and panic. There should be a more tactful way of going about it. And so... If they think that going ahead to announce it is a way to go, then they should be ready to prove it. And if they're unable to prove it, it will make the issue quite dicey. And that is what Most Reverend Dr. Kwabna Buafo is saying. Interestingly, there are some other pastors who are saying that, well, the police got it wrong. And one of them is the leader and founder of a life chapel international archbishop elect Elisha Salifo uh, Amwako. And he says that, well, um, you know, the police got it wrong. And in fact, they couldn't care the wrath of God by this directive and so they would have to withdraw this statement he's not the only one Nigel Gacy also prophet Nigel Gacy says that he's going to still prophesy with confidence and is not afraid uh, because he's doing the work of God I have a, a you know a very respected man of God seated next to me and he's a friend of the show we've had him on the show quite a number of times this year he's been such a blessing and today he'll tell us what he thinks about it before I introduce him let's just take a look at some other prophets and pastors and what they had to say about the police directive. This is a welcoming news. I want to commend the current IGP for acting on the current particular issue. Let's put ourselves in the shoes of people who, um, who, were, who were subject This is a welcoming news. I want to commend the current IGP for his proactiveness and gathering the courage to address this particular issue. Let's put ourselves in the shoes of people who, um, who, were, who were subjects of prophecy. So I, I, I can imagine myself. I go to church one Sunday and the prophet comes and says that, Pastor Wingham, you are going to die this year. Do you know that? impact to have on my wife and my kids so you go on radio you go in the media probably you'll cause fear and panic and we should also know that prophecies are not just about doom 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 yeah because all that we hear over the years have been that this man is going to die this man is going to involve in an accident that man is going to cause this and so just that and I think that God does not deal with humanity in that manner. I believe in prophecy. Once a while, God opens our eyes and we hear his voice. So there's nothing wrong. But the 31st December problem and the kind of rampant way of giving prophecies, if it is God, who am I <laughs> to challenge? But make sure it is God. That's all. The Bible says that for the devil came to steal, to kill, and to destroy why most of the times they see the debt is that when purpose is trying to be elevated to an extreme for people to enjoy out of a persona the enemy comes in to shorten it for we wrestle not against flesh and blood so in other words if uh, debt prophecies are coming it's not the fault of the prophets 
but rather God speaks and exposes the plan of the enemy against a great persona. But the question is, should it be done publicly instead of reaching out to that person? That's the debate as well. And joining me this morning, I'm very honored to have Reverend Dr. Lawrence Tete. He's the founder and president of Worldwide Miracle Outreach, and he's here with us. Good morning. Good morning. I hope Bella. you're well. Merry Christmas. Many, many, many happy returns. I'm looking good. Thank you very much. I haven't seen you since April. That was the last time you were in the you, studio. Since you dodged me oh, from your father's funeral. <laughs> I didn't dodge you. My family, you know how much my family love you. And I know. Would have come. All my brothers would have come. I, I thought you were coming with them this morning. Well, they're upset with you. Oh, I, I apologize. <laughs> I'm sure they're watching. Please forgive me. I was supposed to come for... Okay, we'll talk about that later. Okay, okay. But good to have you in the studio. I hope you. you're well. By his grace. So this... I don't know if I should call it a controversy. I'm not sure how you received this statement by the Ghana Police Service on prophecies. Has it been on your mind? And has it been of concern to you as well? If there was any time in the history of Ghana, I was very sad. Mm. It was this time. Why? I was sad because we, we, the pastors, have allowed ourselves for the church to be reduced to this. That the police will have to give us a statement mm. to be guided about how we handle spiritual matters in church. Mm. It was supposed to have been the opposite. We reduce prophecy to be ridiculed. And I think a few people took the thing for granted. Prophecy is one of the greatest gifts in the Bible. Mm. It admonishes, it directs, it rebukes, it encourages. As a matter of fact, a church without prophecy is dead. But of course, I'm first to admit that a few of our folks abused it. Mm. And then prophecy became a show off. How much of a prophecy I give yeah. will determine how powerful I am. Unfortunately for us, we failed to prophesy the coming of COVID-19. Hmm. And so it's, it's a check on all of us. But I feel very sad yeah. that the police will have the guts to instruct the church. When in 31st, the police should be concentrating their energy to tell us how burglaries happen how armed robbers infiltrate into our church, how whilst we are spending the 31st, people will be stealing in our houses, mm. how people will take advantage to rob us on the road. And so there are so many secret implications. So it is, it's, it's a 50-50 thing, and, and we, we need to have a holistic approach to it. Yeah. I'm here to run the one-way hand. It's fine that the police has come up with directive, but I also ask the question, couldn't the police have called a handful of people who give the prophecies? But, but that's the thing. They call just a handful of them. Like you're saying, prophecy should be a part of your church yes. anyway. So that would have to mean because, inviting because I think that the entire Christian fraternity. This thing had fraternity. emanated because of a few incidents we've happened, that has happened. So they should have picked those we people. We could have easily invited them. The IGP has done something that's very wonderful. And I must commend him. Mm. Since he came into the seat, he's invited Clergy. certain groups. Yeah. He met the clergy, mm -hmm. met the religious leaders, met the artists, yeah. met so many group of people. Yeah. So I think in that same spirit, maybe his advice, that should have advised him to have called a handful of people. The people who give prophecies in Ghana, we know them. You know, I know, we all know. Mm. We all know where those prophecies come from. Mm. And, and somebody said the last time, it made so much sense to me that even criminality has no aspiring dates. Mm. So if that means a little caution to them that, look, we know you've been doing this over the years, mm. that somebody will die, somebody will live, somebody will have an accident. This time around, be very mindful. Okay. And they call a few of them and assert them down. It's not be, it will not be a blanket thing to the whole church. I am against mm -hmm. prophecies that say somebody will die. You're against it. I'm it doesn't against mean it. that God does not reveal those, those you know, prophecies. Prophecies should have some level of decorum. Mm -hmm. And it must be scripture-based. There are four cardinal things that we should not lose sight of. Mm. We have to be wise in our prophecies. Yeah. So wisdom is very paramount. And in all things we do, we have to be wise. Mm -hmm. And so the way we even deliver the message should be delivered with a level of wisdom. Yeah. Number two, there must be some discreetness about it. Mm -hmm. And then if, if we decide to really go ahead, 
being being circumspect yeah. is another aspect that we need to so there are instances in the bible bella that prophecies were given to great men of god mm. and they handled it with wisdom okay. one of such was the prophecy that was given to king Ezekiel. The prophet Isaiah, who is one of the major prophets, you know, when we talk about major prophets, it doesn't mean that he's the biggest. It means he wrote volumes of books. Okay. Minor prophets were like Micah, uh, Obedia, yeah, uh, so okay. they wrote small books. Mm. But in the Bible, we've also had a good, a bad, and but we've also had false prophets in the Bible. Mm. So, what did Isaiah the prophet do? He went to the king mm. and told the king, You are about to die. Put your house, put your home in no order. order. Yeah. So that is a discreet one. When you receive a prophecy, if I receive a prophecy about you, which I think I have now, I'll tell you directly. <laughs> but you're you saying it on TV now. I've, I've not said what it is. <laughs> I've not said what it is. Is this good or bad? So for want a good one. Oh, okay. Then for it's want of you a better one. No, I'll tell them that. <laughs> I'm going to tell them that next time, next year, yeah. when the marriage is coming on, I want to come for you. Hey, my is coming. I want to come in. Hey, I want hey, to be hey, part hey, of hey, the hey. officiating <laughs> ministers. Hey, hallelujah. You know, so, so we, from coming back to the seriousness of this subject, yeah. when we receive prophecies for people, mm -hmm. whether it's a, an uplifting one or a rebuking one, depending on people's structure in society, yeah. we should have a way of disseminating that in, and discharging that information. Isaiah went to the house and spoke to the man. Mm. And that is how I put it. Dathan was another example. He went to David. It was a very difficult one, but he had a wise way of doing it. So I think we I must, I must accept this, that yeah. we, the men of God, have brought, it have brought this on ourselves. Otherwise, the police has no right. We, 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 we enjoy freedom of worship here. Yeah. We have freedom of speech here. And uh, my wife said something the last time, made sense to me. She said, if the person is like that, there are a lot of prophets I don't listen to. Okay. And sometimes it's you, the media, that causes the problem. Because there are a lot of the things that are said, you put it out there. And people who, their ears with them, they, they want to hear listen. all these things. But otherwise, some of these prophecies should have been handled with a lot of Decorum. But let's understand that there's also social media and traditional media. And yeah. so even before traditional media, mm. you know, gets a hold of it, mm -hmm. it's already spread on social media. Yeah. So they try to come in and also get angles to mm. it. But if you say invite these particular people to come for it, it might be that maybe there are some prophets who are also giving out prophecies in their churches. It's not recorded and put on social media. Mm. The reason why we know most of these people who do it constantly is because, again, there's that availability. Mm. So if they call just them, it doesn't really control those uh, other ones who might not get the limelight to also put I've, out their prophecies, even though they're causing damage privately. I've, I've always looked at, uh, I've always wanted a holistic approach to issues. Mm. When we put holistic approaches to issues, let me put this thing up. Okay. When, when we put holistic approaches to issues, we are able to get a balanced view. Yeah. I mean, this issue calls for a debate. On the one hand, some would think it's an attack on the church, mm. which sometimes from hindsight, it can also be okay. there are people who are anti-Christian, anti-religious. Mm. They are peeved with everything with the church. Yeah. And so they take advantage of occasion. Like you'll be surprised that for all you know, IGP Dampari mm. is not part of this particular decision. Probably. Do you, you understand? Probably. He was not the one who signed the letter. But it, it was signed by the director of public affairs, yes. Superintendent Alexander. Kuzumi. Yes. So what I'm saying is that we need to be very balanced. For me, the balance aspect is very important. Okay. So that, is that we don't create the impression as if the church is being picked on. Mm. Let's, let's face this, that you think besides the church, if it's another religious organization, mm. it will be taken for granted. There are so many things that are done to the church that cannot be done elsewhere. So we need to be, we need to be very mindful to create a balance. And I, I'm first to concede that we, the church, have brought this to ourselves. But if the leaders, mm -hmm. if we have all sat together exactly. and called some people to book, a lot of things will not happen. I have listened to some of the prophecies and I shake because I think that where is the scripture back in this? Mm. Where is this supported by Bible? And why should somebody go out of it? And is a prophecy just to show off our powers or 
Mm. It is to bring the glory of God. So we, we need to create a check. We but create Doc, a that's the problem. And I like that you admitted that the leader should have also called these other mm -hmm. uh, pastors to book. But you never did that. And this has been going on for so long. And I'll take it back, Meher, so rest in peace, Ebony. I'll take it back to her. And the fact that there were also these same prophecies, uh, we're told that at least she was told privately in some cases. But there were times when it came out publicly, and then eventually it happened. And so that also gave these other prophets, you know, the temerity to come out and give out those prophecies because it had happened in someone's life where they prophesied she was going to die through these means, and it's actually happened. But the leaders never called them to book, and they allowed it to go on to the extent that Shatawali had to even fake you know, his, his death and all that, his shooting, just to mock this man of God. No, I but was... But nobody came out. Bella, I was caught up in the Satawali saga. Satawali saw me, came to see me, and mm. uh, he, he referred to me as his father. Yeah. And then I prayed for him. And I know he was very concerned about that. Mm. Um, fortunately, we even ended up around the same time, traveling on the same flight to the UK. Okay. He was very excited. We had a very good time together. And then I came out with a press statement that Satawali would not die. Mm. Because having listened to the message, I realized that's no spiritual marriage. You, you don't need to be a rocket scientist. You don't need to be a spiritualist mm. or somebody who's spiritually inc inclined to even know that this one doesn't make sense. Mm. Somebody wants to just take advantage. So I came out and I made a statement that Satawali would not die. And certainly he didn't die. Mm. Satawali's parents called me to thank me. His mother was so thankful to me to have made that statement mm. that his son will not die. Yeah. And in the end, even Shatawali himself was very thankful. In the end, Shatawali didn't die. But look at how he ended up. Mm -hmm. So that's what I'm saying that we need to create a balance there. We, the men of God, have a responsibility. But it is not just the men of God who has a responsibility. The whole of Ghana mm. have a responsibility. Mm. There is this thing that is creeping into our, the fiber of our community, which is not good. Mm, we have journalists who are bad. We have lawyers who are bad. Mm. We have politicians who are bad. And in every society, you have the good, the bad, and the ugly. Mm -hmm. So sometimes we should also be mindful that a few that has brought this repute to the kingdom should not be used to judge the entire community. Why are they not being brought to book then? I've asked this question before, and I was told that they do not belong to these uh, organizations, the Christian Council, Bella, Christ why are so the it's journalists, difficult to why control are the journalists, them. Why are the journalists who have made mistakes, who have gone outside the ethics of journalism, not brought to book. We shouldn't, it should not, it should not be a one-way thing. That's mm -hmm. what I'm saying. We all have a collective responsibility. Mm -hmm. And the responsibility here is that we have the Ghana Journalism Association, we have the Ghana Bar Association, we have mm -hmm. the Legal Council, we have a lot of people. But journalists of belong to the GJA. And yes. so if anything happens, mm -hmm. at least we know that the GJA, or at least the media house that they work with, mm -hmm. in most cases, would rebuke them or do what they have to do to bring them back on track. But we don't see that happening with these oh, pastors because we're told that they do not belong to these councils. And so it's difficult to even control what they do. That is I mean, see how churches are springing up. You don't go anywhere to go and get a permit. One minute you see a church here, the next minute across the street, another church has and must, sprung must, up. And nobody's must, really controlling that. I must confess, though, that the churches springing up is one of the best that are happening to Ghana anyway. I know okay. that is a digression from what you are saying. Mm. It's one of the I, best I, things. I'd rather we rather? get a lot of churches in Ghana than we get a lot of robbery and uh, pubs in Ghana. But I'd if churches we get are a, deceiving these people, is it not another form of robbery? No. Because that's people what, are buying oil and saying. things at exorbitant that's, prices. That's what, that's what I'm saying at Bella. In every community, from the days of old mm. until now, you have the good, the bad, and the ugly. Mm. Whether we like it or not, it's human society. Mm -hmm. In the days of Bible, there were false prophets. Mm -hmm. In the days of the Bible, there were prophets who were prophets of doom. But the Bible said, by their fruits, ye shall know them. Now here we see today, you and I will not go to certain churches. But the rest of the That's what I'm saying, that it, it comes from somewhere. Mm. We have a collective responsibility. This requires of a massive united front where you and I will be doing what you are doing now, mm. digesting everything and seeing that this is not good, this is right. Yeah. And whether we like it or not, there were certain people who were hailed last year, mm. were hailed two years ago, were hailed three years ago. Today, mm. by their own deeds, they themselves know they've lost their places. Mm. And so with time, I think things changes, but we shouldn't think that the church is not doing well. I like the way the chairman of Christian Council came out 
Professor Bafo, who mm. I've known very well. Mm. I've ministered with him. I've worked with him. I've ministered with the Methodist Church. Yeah. I like the way he came out. I like the way the head of president came out. I like the way the charismatic leaders are coming out. Mm. Yes, we are condemning our own. Not many institutions are able to condemn their own. Mm. And I must say this, let's put this on record, that the way Christian leaders have come to even embrace some of these statements and condemn our own. In most institutions, they defend themselves. And so let us applaud the leaders first. Mm. And whether we like it or not, you and I know that of all the thousands of so-called millions of churches we are talking today, mm -hmm. we can count our fingertips the number of churches that go the way you go. So we have done well to hmm. some extent. And Ghana need to really applaud Christian leaders in Ghana for the goodwill. All of you here, but mm. for Christianity, mm. some of you will not be nicely dressed like that. You will put on some person, person somewhere working. So God has used the church to bring some sanity to this nation, and we should thank God for Christianity. Okay. If, <laughs> <laughs> if that's the case then, how does one tell that this is a real prophecy, this is a true prophecy from God or not? What do I look out for? Wonderful. The basis for our prophecies and spirituality is the Bible. Mm. The Bible is the only yardstick we can use to yeah. determine it. Mm -hmm. Now, try me. If I get a prophecy for you that go and kill your mother, you don't need to be a spiritualist to know it is nonsense. It's wrong. Yeah. It's wrong. If I get a prophecy for you that you should go and bath yourself in the gutters tomorrow morning, that that's what God is saying. Mm. It is not a prophecy from God. And so we, we, at every given stage, we develop. Let me give you an example. And I gave okay. that example yesterday on GTV. Mm. A sensitive one, but for, for clarity of what we are saying. Mm. You heard of the gentleman called Apreku. Mm. Apreku, my daughter. Okay. Yeah. And Apreku <laughs> had a word from the Lord. Yeah. And then the journalist asked him that the word you have from the Lord, what did God say? And mm. he said, Apreku, my daughter my daughter now you don't need to be a rocket scientist you don't need to be a prophet yourself you don't need to be a specialist that god cannot miss gender yeah. the god who created the heavens and the heaven who created the man and the woman mm. who created the male and the female will not miss gender so straight away not only did he become a radical mm. just as i call his name a yeah. and you ended up preku what my daughter, my daughter. <laughs> and i'm preku he certainly there's not a woman who in the anywhere in the world mm. that is called a prayer yeah. so straight away and that is how his ministry started and yes. he himself eventually sadly i feel so sad yeah. he lost his life yeah. because i can imagine the embarrassment the pain the frustration he went through mm. and also the fact that even his followers might have realized that oh You're truly if you receive from god god will know the difference between male and female. So that's what I'm saying that eventually, uh -huh. Bella, eventually, as time goes on, the, the separation will come okay. and people will find it. Pretty. All I'm saying now is that we shouldn't also in the midst of all this thing, throw the baby and the water away. away. Because mm -hmm. when we do that, the people who have labored, hard won reputations, put it on the line to come and preach the gospel, they mm. feel like there's no appreciation. And you yeah. know, when everybody is, is, is tagged as one of them, it's very then painful. It because there are some of us who sacrifice. For crying out loud, I left my vocation as an economist to do what I'm doing now mm. because I see the future of this. So when it happens like Omunya, they're all the same. Yeah. It's not fair. Okay. And then also, let me be quick to say this that not all these prophets who professors are, are wrong prophets. So there's a level of education some people need, mm. there's a level of enlightenment some people need. They have to be fathered. Some of them even have to be led. And I have a saying that you can only be fathered to mm. become a father. Yeah. You can only be led to become a leader. Okay. And so sometimes, every now and then, we all have checks. There are people that call my father. There are people that I relate to. There are people that I think if things are not going well, I can speak can, to. Yeah. That is what we need to get together. And then sometimes, let's treat these people in love and be able to draw them. You'll be surprised to know that there are some of these young prophets that I'm speaking into.
Okay. Yes. These same ones who have been... There are some that comes to my house. There are some okay. I speak to. There are some who say, hey, slow down. Hey, you don't do this way. Hey, no, no, no. And, and you have to do it in love. Because otherwise, if you don't take care, in the midst to just condemn and brush all of them aside, you let them rather go so independent that you cannot speak into their lives again. again. So let us... And I keep saying that we need a holistic approach to this whole thing. This year, mm. I am holding an all night. Okay. And this, this is an all night that I'm doing now that I've never done since I left Ghana in the Middle East. Is it a virtual one or are you doing it no, in I'm person? No, I'm doing it in person. Well, I mean, the churches have been advised to consider holding their all night services virtually because of the spread of COVID-19. No, that's we, we are observing all the COVID protocols. Mm. And there's a way to do it. And, and that is another thing. You see, yeah. that is another thing. Uh -huh. We have to be mindful and circumspect. The law should not be, we shouldn't be an animal farm. Okay. Where some are more important than others. Mm. When the politicians are doing a program, they don't put a tag on it. At least they tell them to. When they come to it, we, we, we to see the COVID protocols. We watch and they both never really do anyway. They will never really yeah. do it. But when they come to the church, we sort of put a tag on it. Mm. I don't want to die. Mm. I don't want my wife and children to die. So I believe in a, the protocols. Mm. And I, have, I'm, I should be wise enough to know that if one gets uh, infected, it can affect a lot of people. Mm. So putting on the mask is very important. Mm. Watching on, observing all the protocols for me is very important. But we should also forget that the 31st is a very spiritual moment for people, mm. where people are transiting from one year to the other year, especially in this year where a lot of things have happened. Mm -hmm. People have gone through so many unfortunate situations. It's not that just economic situation, but people spiritually spirit are down. Mm -hmm. There are people who have not had fellowship in a very long time since the, oh, the yeah, beginning of yeah. COVID. So we need to be very mindful not to also become two strangers. And that's why I'm saying that the police statement, fine, mm -hmm. but there are so many things I was expecting the police to have told us of. 31st December night, mm -hmm. people go into other people's houses to steal. Are we getting any idea of how to be vigilant, how to be security minded? And also don't forget that all these things that are happening are, must be of national security concern. So let us create yes. a balance. But a number of churches do not have that space mm -hmm. to, you know, consider doing physical or social distancing because mm. sometimes even the car park there's barely any space there and it's just a church building and we've had we've already been told about holding indoor events mm. which is why they are cautioning that maybe churches should consider holding it virtually because if you're going to do it indoor even if you are adhering to the social distancing protocols it's still an enclosed area and it could spread that's what i'm saying that to say that's what i'm saying that it's well noted and granted but the church, some of the church leaders have also been very concerned mm. about how the same politicians who tell us to be mindful never get mindful when it comes to political rallies, when mm. it comes to incidents. So we, we need to create a balance somewhere so that it doesn't look as if the community is becoming anti-churchy. Mm. And, and, and I've heard people say things, unfortunate things like the spread is through the church. Is the spread not through politicians? Is the spread not through... And as a matter of fact, when we look at the things that are happening in our community now, science has even lost track of what COVID is. In fact, science was made naked. Science became so blasphemous mm. and felt like they were playing God until COVID made science realize that Obi and you Obi are. Mm. Because the scientists themselves died more than you can imagine. Mm. So for me, the God factor is very important. Okay. And we should not lose that. And, and in fact, I have a word in season for okay. the Ghanaian community. Maybe for the first time, I'm also going to go out to prophesy this year at 31st. I, oh, you are waiting till tomorrow. I thought you were going to give it to us on no, air today. No, it is you too wait. early. Okay. It's too early. Um, I believe the prophecies that some of us have are prophecies for the nation. Mm. They are not private. Nations are open. Mm. There's no private nation or yeah. private country. But, so the prophecies are meant for the nation and, and but this is a public platform no, a number of people i think it's not time yet it's not time yet i have okay. to wait to make sure that what i have is not just of season okay and in season but also that is something that god is truly wanting me to say i should not be in a haste mm. but god has given me a word 
for the nation. Are you ready no to profit. prove it in court? Because they're saying that if you give these prophecies, then you should be willing to prove it in court. I think that was just, <laughs> I think that was just a joke the man of God said. But the truth is that <laughs> nobody proves a prophecy. Anyway, yeah. But the prophecy itself mm. is proven by the effectiveness of it. Okay. And you know, if it is of God, it will come to pass. If Definitely. it's not of God, I mean, we all know people have prophesied, we know this one. People prophesy who is going to win, who is going to lose, who is yeah. going to win, and then in the end, and some people also prophesy because of their allegiance. Mm. And so I, I think I should be matured enough to not put, put myself in that box. I can't have you here and not have us talk about what happened in Parliament uh, mm -hmm. about two weeks ago, or just a week ago, where we saw our parliamentarians exchange blows mm -hmm. over the e-levy. And it's sad because at the beginning of this year, um, you know, when we're voting for the Speaker, we saw them also engage in this kind of melee, um, you know, and now we're seeing it happen at the end of the year as well. For the Christian community and for you as a man of God, what do you make of this? I think we need to pray for our nation. For some of us, it was not only embarrassing, it was also a hit in our face. Because mm. there are some of us who are goodwill ambassadors for Ghana. I live in the UK. I travel around the world. Mm. We propagate Ghana. We carry the flag of Ghana. I'm proud to be a Ghanaian than to be a, a British. Mm. And so we have carried that notion that Ghana is a very peaceful nation. Yeah. And for what we saw on the 6th of January, mm. the eve of the swearing, till the early hours of 7th. We didn't think it would end the year like that. But this is what happened. Mm -hmm. They did Alpha and Omega. <laughs> <laughs> they had to complete it. They started with fight yeah. and ended up with fight. So that is why we need to go back again. To also let our politicians know that parliament is not war. Mm. Democracy is not war. Mm. Democracy is not fight. Democracy is debate and argument. And argument with decorum, with understanding. Debates. I mean, we disagree and agree. And they should not forget that they are not the first to be in parliament. Mm. We also need to sensitize and come to that place where people get what we call then political education. Mm. For people to understand the essence of parliament. Okay. I think the title honorable is too honorable for them to afford. And I believe by now some of them will be sitting back and watching themselves on TV yeah. or on social media. And what would their children, their spouses, and their family think of them? So mm. I don't think it's late at all. Okay. I must give you this assurance that for me, all these things are good. How are they good? Okay, I'll give you a story. Okay. The story was about two friends. Mm -hmm. These friends live together, and whatever happened in their life, they said, this one too is for good. Mm. They kept saying it until they became old, and one became a king. And when his other friend had that, heard that his friend has become a king. Yeah. He was so excited, he went to the palace to congratulate him. Wow, my best friend has become a king. Mm. This one too is for yeah. good. Yeah. The king said, since I became a king, nobody has come to acknowledge me. You are the only one. So because of what you've done, I want us to go hunting together. Wow, I will be hunting with the king. Mm. This one too is for good. When the time was up, we were putting the weapons together. When the king made a mistake, his trigger went off. Oh, the king has shot. And so, as he screamed, bah, he has shot his own thumb. Mm. The king did not kill anybody, but he has shot his thumb. His thumb is just popped off. His friend looked at him and he said, wow, this one too is for good. It's your young quite you are like the I just say, how dare you? I've just lost my thumb. I'm gushing with blood and water. And he said this one. He said, but king, that's what we always say. This one too is it's for, for good. good. He told his guard, get rid of this nonsense man, throw him to jail. When he was going to jail, he looked back at the king and said, this one too is That's for good. Okay. Five years down the line, he was still in jail. Mm. And any time he hears anything good about the king, he still says, this one too is for good. The king saw has healed. The wound has healed. The king wanted to go hunting again. But his childhood friend was in prison. Mm. So he had to go on his own. When he got into the forest, he was captured by barbarians, cannibals. What did they do? Mm. What do cannibals and yeah. barbarians do? They eat human flesh. flesh. So they captured him and said, I'm a king. They say, yeah, we see from your neck and your hands and your legs all the ornaments showing that you're a king. But since we started eating human beings, we've never had the privilege to I'm eat a king, king before. <laughs> so they took him, put him on a big tree, tied him. They were about to kill him when one too no person of the killers mm. noticed the man has no thumb. Mm. This is superstition. 
This superstitious man who is a king without a thumb. Touch we can't him. touch him. Untie him and let him go. When they were untying him, he remembered what his friend said five years ago, that this it's one okay. too is for good. So he went to the prison to go and apologize for the friend. Mm. That I'm sorry to have been a bad friend. I'm sorry to have brought you here. The friend said, you have nothing to be sorry about. This one too is it's for good. good. He said, so why do you keep saying that? He said, if you had not sent me here into prison five years ago, I would have still be your friend. Mm. And when you were going to hunt, I would have gone with you. And, and when they captured. got hold of you, they yeah. would have captured me too. And when they noticed you didn't have a tomb, they would have noticed I'm holding up a tomb. And by now the story has been different. What is happening to Parliament, in a way, mm. is for good. It's a wake-up call for everybody. Mm. Anybody who goes to Parliament now will know that the whole world is watching you. Some Parliament mm. members' reputation would have been ruined yeah. because of this. Some people who we respected and had hard work. And look at the, the cream of leadership in Parliament. Yeah. Look at the pedigree of Abang mm -hmm. Look at the pedigree of Joe Weiss. Mm -hmm. Look at the pedigree of Honorable uh, mm Amwakon. -hmm. The three speakers, the speaker and the two deputy speakers, solid guys. Then look at our um, minority leader majority and majority leader. leader. I know the two of them personally. Okay. Men some bones, J. Men some bones, an astute lawyer and a proper Christian. Mm. He preaches. Did yes. I can tell you that he preaches. He's been accused of causing confusion. He in preaches. Then, when it comes to Harun Idusu, I live in North Kanishi. He plays soccer with the boys in Fadama. Mm. I mean, he's one person that has so much respect. Mm. Somebody that when you, anywhere I am, he'll call me Rev and come and sometimes he behaves as if he's, he's a born again Christian himself. Mm. So these two guys are disciplined guys. And if you see the two of them talk together, I've seen them a few times. Recently, when the Hungarian uh, Speaker of Parliament came, we had a meeting with them yeah. in Parliament. And the way the two of them jail, you don't expect this to this happen. Kind of thing. So this one too is for good. That is going to be a wake up call. They are going to sit back and analyze themselves that what is the whole essence, the respect that they value. Yeah. I mean, before. Before that time, you cannot speak against parliament the way people are speaking against mm -hmm. parliament now. But now, they've lost the moral right, the moral ground to even invite mm -hmm. people to privilege hmm, uh, committee. committee. So yeah. this one too is for, is for good. good. Do we need the E-Levy, by the way? I think that is for the parliament to decide now. Okay. Where it is now, I think it will be very unfair for some of us to start preempt what they But you are Ghanaian. And a number of Ghanaians are saying they don't need it because that's tax upon tax upon tax and they're not ready to pay it. Now, let me say this to you proverbially. Mm -hmm. I'm an economist by profession. And I've always said economy is a borrowed language. Mm. So, we have to look at what is good for our nation. Okay. And for me, that is why we have the parliament. I'm looking forward to parliament coming back. Okay in January okay. to sit on the table and I bet you with all the things that have happened to them now, they'll have a proper conclusion. You're an economist. They're mm. saying that it's either the ELV so we don't go back to IMF for a bailout. But what I'm saying is I'm not here, Bella. I'm not here to talk to you as an economist. <laughs> but you're an economist leave, anyway, I so that. I just wanted to find out. I leave that what to do them. you make of the nation's economy and do we really need the ELV because we're told that's our savior at this point. That's why I'm saying that it's, 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 taking, it's taking people painstaking time to come to, to that together. conclusion. Okay. Let us sit down and analyze it. Okay. Let's psychoanalyze it. Let's digest it. Let's look at the merits and the demerits and the conclusion. I mean, I'm really looking forward to Parliament coming up. Okay. With, and, 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 you know, in economics, we call something contingency approach. Mm hmm there must be a point of convergence at some stage. And I think we should allow Parliament to bring that convergence. Okay. Instead of us taking sides. You know, unfortunately for us in Ghana now, there is also another spirit that we need to work on. Which spirit is that? You cannot speak your mind because I'm, I'm, the moment you, make, you speak your mind, you are put in the box. Yeah. And it's a very sad thing. And we need to mature out of it. Is that why you're not speaking? Or? Not necessarily. I mean, at this stage of my life, what do I, somebody asked me some time ago, are you not scared? Scared of what? Yeah. I'm not young anymore. Yeah, which is why I was hoping <laughs> that at least you tell no, us which side you. That is, I, I think that is for long. another time. Okay. I think All right. really that's for another Thank you so time. much, by mm. the way. And finally, I mean, we're ending the year tomorrow. What word do you have for the end? I am holding a special um, watch night service at 
the Christian village. Mm. It's behind Ashmonton School okay. at the bottom of the golf course. Mm. And I must say, Bella, I don't normally say things like that. I believe God has a word for the nation. Mm -hmm. It's not a private word. A word that I believe the entire nation of Ghana needs, both parties and parliament needs. Mm. And I'm really going to speak that word. I'm going to, not going to speak it with any intimidation. I'm going to speak as God has directed me. Mm. And like I rightly said, I'm the first to concede that we have abused prophecy. Mm. And that's why we're having the police direct as what to do spiritually in church. Mm -hmm. But this word that God has given me spiritually is a way that we And we're going to start as early as 8 p.m. Okay. And by 10 p.m. it has taken, we're going to be beaming it live across the world. Okay. Uh, my stations on all the Christian channels around the world are going to be beaming it. And here in Ghana too, most of the TV stations will oh, beam sure. it up. Okay. But I think the word we need it for our nation because we are losing sight of so many things. Mm. And remember, righteousness exalts a nation. Definitely. And in every community, when the righteous rule, the people rejoice. Mm. And so Ghana is not about NDC, MPP anymore. Mm. It's about God's will to bless. And I bless you all. I pray that God give all of us the wisdom of God mm. so we do the right thing at the right time. I pray that we don't lose focus of what we are all for. And let us all become genuine ambassadors for this nation, Ghana. Mm. Whether you're a journalist or a politician or a minister of the gospel or whatever vocation you are, remember your place in Ghana is so important that you make yourself relevant to bless the people. And let me also congratulate TV3 for the good work done. Thank you so much. Um, most of your content has been just wonderful. Thank you. And I think, I pray that you put maintain that decorum because in this era where certain stations seem to have distorted mm. the facts, let us be careful that we don't abuse it so that we don't become like the situation. One day, otherwise, one day, the police will also write to the journalists yeah. and tell them that. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Doc. Okay. Reverend Dr. Loris Tete, he is the founder and president of the Worldwide Miracle Outreach, and he just joined us this morning. Make sure that you join him at Christian Village for the 31st Watch Night Service. And to the Honorable DC and aspiring MP, North Die Constituency, Honorable Kujo Atta, uh, one year ends, another begins. I'm grateful to God that you were able to come with us on this journey. We wish you a blissful holiday season and looking forward to seeing you in 2022. This is from Frankie Champon here at Media General Conti. And also, uh, this is a birthday message to the wife of Lawrence Kwenye here. Uh, he says, uh, to my wife Selena, to my children Jonathan, Nathan and Natalia, Merry Christmas and a happy, happy new year. Thank you so much, Doc, for speaking to us. And we'll be back Thank to you. speak to the other two mental finalists. They'll tell us what to expect from them as they get ready for the finals. We'll be right back. This is TV3 Needy.